of you in this room that have helped us along this incredible journey these past now 11 years, 10 years for the event. We would truly not be where we are without you. And to be honored tonight is icing on the cake. Um, for all of the sadness involved in losing Claire, we have received so many gifts from all of you, from the now 30 committee members who help us bring this event to the community every year, to the children, to the neighborhood children. I see Kate here with us. Oh, I give books. I'm the book lady in the neighborhood in that Claire's Day. Um, let me offer to you a little bit of background as to what I'm going to offer to you. Number one of which is that, you know, as parents after losing Claire, we felt compelled to do something in her honor. As a mother of three, I had to do something to bring myself up from my knees from that morning of July 6, 2000. And raise up and raise my children in a way as such that they could look up at me, that those other parents who at times couldn't even look at me, for they knew not what to say. And amazingly, six months after Claire passed, we were, as a family, traveling down to my oldest niece's wedding down in Jacksonville. Divine intervention is the only way that I can describe it, that there is a Time magazine in my seat pocket, in my plane seat, and I started to look through it, and I read it, and I'm crying. And Brad turns to me, and he said, are you okay? And I said, Brad, this is what we're going to do. There was a feature on the Texas Book Festival, and for former First Lady Laura Bush's involvement with the book festival. And what I loved about the story is that they honored and celebrated authors and illustrators from Texas. And as a mom and as a writer, every time that I would read a book to my children, we'd go to that back flap and we'd learn about the writers and we'd learn about the illustrators so that they knew that they were just ordinary people like us. They were just very talented. And so I knew from that exercise we had a ton of people out, literally in our backyard who were authors and illustrators. So there's a little background there. Claire's favorite color was purple. Good to see some purple in the audience tonight, too. And through Claire's Day, I was given the opportunity, a wonderful opportunity, I was commissioned to write a children's book titled Hidden Ohio, which reveals all of the beauty and wonder about our great state. And I have been um, delighted and honored to visit many schools throughout the state these last couple of years. And in my presentation, I start my first slide in my PowerPoint starts with Once Upon a Time. And of course, it ends with, Kate, every good story that starts with Once Upon a Time ends with and they lived happily ever after. And I share with students that, as with every fairy tale, sometimes there's some really great parts, and sometimes there's some really sad parts. So I ask the students to help me through those sad parts, as I will ask you to do the same here. And so in my sharing with you, as a writer, I wrote something for you. Once upon a time, there lived a handsome prince who reigned in the large city. <laughs> celebration of St. Patrick 27 years ago. They wed. That's a really shortened version of what it took between those four years. But <laughs> they wed, and there were celebrations throughout the land. The sun and the moon smiled. The magical fairies gathered, and with a sprinkling of their dust, the royal palace halls were filled with the laughter of three little children who were named Lady Claire Lindsay, Lady Kyle Allison, and the young prince, Ian Gunner. The young family danced, sang, and traveled to many foreign lands together. They shared stories, they read books, and created many fantastical memories. The trees swayed in harmony to their bliss. The young ladies, as was the custom of the land, went off to school sharing their new discoveries with their parents and their little brother. Soon, young Ian joined them, his oldest sister, Claire, sharing the secrets of the written word with him long after the day's shadows disappeared. From an early age, Claire loved words in every form, saying them, often loudly, 
and with her own royal sense of drama and flair. She would share stories with Lady Kyle, who would often listen while jumping rope or bouncing a basketball. And coach as well, <laughs> yes, yes. The flowers bloomed amongst their joy. Sadly, Claire's little heart couldn't hold on to all the love that she had to give. And she slipped quietly away from her family while away from her home. Family and friends gathered to remember this little princess gone too soon. Memories were shared, tears were shed, and much loving care was given to the young, heartbroken family. People of the land traveled from great distances to share in their pain. Dark clouds gathered, and the skies wept. Claire's family mourned her absence from their loving home. They missed her smile, her dramatic flair, her crazy hair, and her impish ways. Her younger brother and sister missed their playmate and best friend. The fairies missed hiding amongst her books. The rainbows removed their purple hues in honor of their young friend. Her mama wept and screamed at the dark forces while walking in the woods. Her father lost a little of his heart and offered deals with the ogres if only his oldest daughter was returned to the kingdom. His words blew away on the winds and fell on the ground, caught in the grass dewdrops. Meanwhile, a good witch waved her magic wand and brought to light stories of a celebration of written and spoken words in a land named Texas. This festival brought writers and artists together with children and families read books together and told each other stories just as Lady Claire did. Claire's family decided they would create such an event in their land. They would honor and remember their little reader by sharing her passions with their town. Many loyal subjects lent their hands and hearts to Claire's family to make this tribute a dream come true. The birds and the fairies flitted in delight. So the third Saturday of the month of May is forever known as Claire's Day. The hall with books is filled with children's book authors and illustrators weaving their magic with children that gather from near and far. Young boys are knighted and girls made ladies in waiting as they are celebrated for their improvements in their reading skills. Over 1,400 children given the special care awards over the last decade. Each year over 10,000 children of the land have a real live author illustrator visit their schools and the library system has received $25,000 to buy more children's books. The young ones dance, read, sing, and create on her day. And the sun shines her light and blesses the kingdom. Meanwhile, the fairies continue to watch over Claire's family and friends, sending magical purple dust their way <coughs> when needed and keeping the ogres at bay. Lady Kyle and young Ian have grown with their guidance, bringing many proud smiles to their parents. Her parents, the prince of the city, and the lady of the country continue to hold on to each other, recalling magical days gone by and creating new memories. The sun and the moon smiles once again, and they lived happily ever after. Thank you.